At a tense family gathering, my harsh mother-in-law yelled, You poor girl, you've ruined our family. In a fit of anger, she threw a vase at me, hitting my shoulder and hurting me. To my surprise, my husband just stood quietly next to her, saying nothing. Fueled by anger, I planned my revenge. I shared her shocking illegal secrets on social media, and the very next day, she ended up in jail. My name is Emma, and at 21, I've lived in Austin, Texas, my entire life. Nestled between the lively streets and vibrant culture, my family's handcrafted jewelry store has always been my haven. It's more than just a place of business. It's a sanctuary filled with a sense of polished wood and sparkling gems. My father, Tom, and I have worked together in this store for as long as I can remember. He taught me the delicate art of crafting jewelry and the importance of treating customers like family. Emma, can you help me with this new batch of rings? Dad would call from behind the workbench, his hands dusted with silver filings. Of course, Dad. I'd reply, always eager to dive into the work that made our store so special. I loved spending time with him, learning the ins and outs of the trade, while feeling the warmth of our shared passion. However, our quiet life took a turn when Mrs. Harper opened her coffee shop right next door. She was a force of nature, a woman in her 50s, with an imposing presence and an even more domineering attitude. Mrs. Harper had a reputation for being tough, and her coffee shop quickly became a popular spot. Still, I remained wary of her. There was something about her that felt overpowering, like a storm looming on the horizon. One sunny afternoon, as I arranged the latest jewelry collection in the store window, I noticed Mrs. Harper marching toward me, her expression unreadable. Emma, dear, she exclaimed, her voice slicing through the air. I need to speak with you and your father. Now. Dad glanced at me, his expression a mix of concern and resignation. Here we go again, he muttered, wiping his hands on his apron. I stepped aside as Mrs. Harper strode into our store, her heels clicking against the wooden floor. John, we need to discuss a business opportunity, she declared, her eyes darting around as if assessing our space for its potential. What's on your mind, Beverly? Dad asked, trying to maintain his usual cheerfulness, but I could sense the tension rising. I propose a merger, she stated bluntly. Your jewelry store and my coffee shop could create a wonderful synergy. Just imagine the foot traffic. We could boost sales for both businesses. My heart sank. I didn't want to lose the essence of our family store to a partnership that felt forced and insincere. I exchanged worried glances with Dad, but Mrs. Harper was not finished. And, she added, lowering her voice conspiratorially, I think our children should get married. It would solidify the deal. Married? I echoed, bewildered. But... I hardly know Mark. Mark is a good lad. I'm sure you two would get along famously, she insisted, her tone brooking no argument. Mark was 32, her son. We had barely exchanged a few polite words during our occasional encounters, yet here I was, being pushed into a marriage proposal as part of a business strategy. After a long pause, Dad finally said, I'll need to think about it, Beverly. This is a lot for us to digest. As soon as she left, I turned to dad. Did she really just suggest that I marry her son? This is ridiculous. Emma, I know it's a lot, but think about it. Maybe it could be beneficial for the store, he suggested cautiously. I sighed, feeling trapped. But what about my life? My college plans? I didn't sign up for this. I understand, dad replied, running a hand through his hair. You can take your time to figure it out. Just meet Mark. You might find him more agreeable than you think. Reluctantly, I agreed to meet Mark. The following week, Mrs. Harper organized a dinner at her coffee shop. As I walked in, I was greeted by the rich aroma of coffee and the warm glow of lights strung across the ceiling. Mark stood near the counter, looking somewhat nervous. Hi, Emma, he said with a shy smile, his dark hair tousled. It's nice to finally meet you. Hi, I replied, forcing a smile. We chatted awkwardly for a bit, but as the evening progressed, I found Mark to be kind and genuinely interested in the jewelry business. He asked about my designs and how I wanted to expand the store. I think there's a lot of potential for collaboration, he said, 
nodding enthusiastically. But I also want to respect your vision. Yet, even as we connected, I could feel the shadow of his mother looming over us. Mrs. Harper hovered nearby, her gaze sharp and evaluating. It made me uneasy, as if she was assessing our every word and gesture. Days turned into weeks, and Mark and I began to spend more time together. I found myself softening to his charm, and despite my initial reservations, I agreed to marry him. It felt like a compromise I had to make to please our families and ensure our business's survival. The wedding came quickly, organized almost entirely by Mrs. Harper. It's going to be a grand affair, she declared, leaving no room for input for me. Everyone will be talking about it for months. As I stood in front of the mirror on my wedding day, adjusting my veil, a wave of anxiety washed over me. I looked beautiful, but did that truly matter? Would I lose myself in this marriage, especially with Mrs. Harper pulling the strings? The ceremony passed in a blur, filled with people I hardly knew. All I could focus on was the feeling of being swept away, just a pawn in a game I didn't choose to play. After the vise, Mrs. Harper beamed with pride, as if she had orchestrated the perfect symphony. Welcome to the family, Emma, she exclaimed, her voice dripping with satisfaction. But as the celebrations continued, I felt an unsettling knot in my stomach. Little did I know, this was just the beginning of a challenging journey that would test my strength and resolve. I was about to find out just how much control Mrs. Harper would exert over our lives and how I would have to fight for my independence. The weeks following the wedding blurred into a whirlwind of activity. Mark and I had merged our lives, but it felt like I was the only one making sacrifices. Mrs. Harper took charge of everything, from our daily routines to the operations of both the jewelry store and her coffee shop. I quickly learned that my voice was often drowned out by her louder one. Emma, we need to reorganize the display in your store. Mrs. Harper declared one afternoon, her hands on her hips as she surveyed our merchandise. You're not drawing enough attention to the new collection. Actually, I have a plan for the display, I replied, trying to assert my ideas. I want to focus on the summer collection and use bright colors to attract customers. Bright colors? That's nice, dear. But customers love elegance, she responded dismissively. Trust me, I know what sells. As time passed, the feeling of being trapped grew heavier. I found myself questioning my choices. Mrs. Harper's insistence on running everything made me feel like a ghost in my own life. Every time I tried to take initiative, she would squash my ideas with a wave of her hand or a sharp remark. One evening, as I was cleaning up after a long day at the jewelry store, Mark entered, looking weary from a day at the coffee shop. How was your day? He asked, rubbing the back of his neck. Busy, I replied, trying to keep my tone light. I rearranged the display and added some new pieces, but Mrs. Harper wasn't impressed. Mom has a specific vision for the business, he said, defending her. You know, she just wants what's best for us. I felt a pang of frustration. What about what's best for me, Mark? This is my family store, and I want to honor that. Emma, it's a partnership now. We have to think of the bigger picture, he replied, but I could sense his hesitation. Days turned into months, and the more I tried to assert my independence, the more Mrs. Harper tightened her grip. She pushed my father out of key decisions, leaving him feeling sidelined in the business he had built. I could see the disappointment in his eyes whenever we met, and it crushed me. Dad, I feel like I'm losing everything. I confided one evening when we met for dinner. I don't know how to regain control. Emma, you need to stand up for yourself, he advised gently. This is your life, and you have every right to make your voice heard. Don't let her run your life. His words ignited a flicker of determination within me, but I still felt powerless. Mrs. Harper's dominance was suffocating, and I felt like a prisoner in a gilded cage. The final straw came during a particularly chaotic day at the jewelry store when I overheard Mrs. Harper making decisions that directly impacted my work. Beverly, I interrupted as she spoke to a supplier on the phone. I'd like to discuss our new order. Not now, Emma, she snapped, waving me off as if I were a mere annoyance. I'm busy making sure we don't lose money on these orders. I could feel my face heat with embarrassment and anger. But I need to be involved in decisions that affect my store. She turned to me, 
her expression cold and condescending. This is our store now, and you'll learn to trust my judgment. That evening, I felt the weight of defeat settle on my shoulders. It was as if I had become a shadow of my former self, a mere pawn in a game I never wanted to play. Mark returned home late that night, and I decided it was time to address my concerns. Mark, can we talk? I asked, my voice steady, but filled with urgency. Sure. What's up? He replied, looking tired. I feel like I'm losing my identity in all of this. Mrs. Harper is making decisions without consulting me, and I can't stand it anymore, I confessed. Emma, you knew this would happen when we merged, he replied, trying to remain calm. Mom has experience in running a business. We need her expertise. But at what cost? I countered, my frustration spilling over. This is my family's legacy, Mark. I want to contribute, but I feel sidelined. He sighed, a hint of frustration creeping into his voice. Look, I get it, but maybe you need to give it more time. You'll find your place. But deep down, I knew time wasn't the answer. As the days turned into weeks, I watched Mrs. Harper take complete control, leaving me feeling more helpless than ever. My dreams of pursuing my college studies felt further away, and my sense of self began to fade. One fateful evening, as I was closing up the store, I found a moment of quiet reflection. Standing amidst the shining jewels that had once been my passion, I felt a surge of anger mixed with determination. I knew I had to find a way to reclaim my life, but how? Just then, an idea sparked in my mind, one that could expose Mrs. Harper's true nature. Perhaps it was time to dig deeper into her dealings. If I could uncover something that would help me regain control, maybe I could turn the tides in my favor. But I had to be careful. One wrong move could ruin everything. With newfound resolve, I decided to investigate Mrs. Harper's activities, starting with her coffee shop. Little did I know, I was about to uncover secrets that would change everything. Determined to reclaim my life and the legacy of my family's jewelry store, I started my investigation into Mrs. Harper's activities. It wasn't just about the coffee shop anymore. I sensed there was more beneath the surface, and I needed to uncover it. One day, I decided to visit the coffee shop after hours. As I approached the entrance, I noticed that the lights were still on. Curiosity peaked. I peered through the window and saw Mrs. Harper sitting at a table, her phone pressed to her ear, speaking in hushed tones. We need to move the funds quickly, she said, her voice low but urgent. If we don't act now, we could lose everything. I felt a shiver run down my spine. What could she be talking about? The funds? I silently slipped away, my mind racing with questions. I needed more information, something concrete to understand what Mrs. Harper was really involved in. The following day, I returned to the coffee shop under the guise of needing coffee for the jewelry store. As I stood at the counter waiting for my drink, I overheard a conversation between two of Mrs. Harper's employees. Did you hear about the new supplier she's working with? One said. I've heard some crazy things about them. Yeah, I don't trust them. There's something off about how they operate, the other replied, glancing around nervously. This was my opportunity. I casually approached them, trying to blend in. Hey, what's this about a new supplier? I asked, feigning interest. The first employee exchanged a glance with the second before answering. Just rumors, really. Some say they're involved in, well, shady business. Shady business? I pressed. What do you mean? They're linked to cryptocurrencies, and there's talk of money laundering, the second employee whispered, glancing nervously toward the back of the shop. My heart raced. Could Mrs. Harper be involved in something illegal? I thanked the employees and hurried back to the jewelry store, eager to do more digging. Over the next few days, I watched Mrs. Harper closely. I observed her meetings, noting the names of the people she was interacting with. The more I learned, the more suspicious I became. 
She was running the coffee shop like a front for something much more sinister. Then I decided to reach out to Mr. Green, the lawyer I had met when helping his son, Ethan. He had offered his assistance and expertise, and I realized he might have the resources to help me uncover the truth. Emma, it's great to see you again, he said when we met in his office. How can I help? Mr. Green, I think Mrs. Harper is involved in illegal activities specifically linked to cryptocurrencies, I confessed, feeling the weight of my words. I need your help to investigate. His eyebrows raised in surprise. That's a serious accusation. Do you have any evidence? Not yet, I admitted, feeling the heat of frustration rising in my cheeks. But I've heard rumors from her employees. I think there's something there. All right, I'll see what I can do, he replied, scribbling notes. If she is involved in illegal activities, it could be a big problem for her and for you, too. As I left his office, a mix of anxiety and hope coursed through me. I needed to tread carefully. If Mrs. Harper caught wind of my suspicions, she would surely retaliate. But I was determined to unearth the truth, no matter what it took. That evening, I returned home feeling more empowered. I discussed my findings with Mark, trying to gauge his reaction. Mark, I think there's something serious going on with your mother's business, I said cautiously. He looked at me, concern etched on his face. What do you mean? Are you sure about this? I've heard things from her employees. I think she's involved in illegal cryptocurrency dealings, I explained, holding his gaze. Mom has always been strict about business, he replied, uncertainty in his voice. But she wouldn't do anything illegal, would she? I don't know, but I'm going to find out, I declared, feeling my resolve strengthen. I can't sit by and let her control my life and my father's legacy. As Mark turned to leave, a worried expression crossed his face. Just be careful, Emma. You don't know what she's capable of. His words lingered in my mind as I lay in bed that night. The stakes were getting higher, and I was in deeper than I had ever imagined. But I was more determined than ever to fight back and uncover the truth about Mrs. Harper, no matter the cost. The following days were a blur of anxiety and anticipation. With Mr. Green's help, I felt a renewed sense of purpose. I knew I had to act quickly to gather evidence against Mrs. Harper before she caught wind of my suspicions. I started documenting everything, her meetings, the names of suppliers, and any information I could gather about her coffee shop's finances. One evening, as I was closing up the jewelry store, I decided to sneak into the coffee shop after hours again. The thrill of the hunt coursed through me, pushing me forward despite the risks. As I slipped into the dimly lit space, I was surprised to see Mrs. Harper still inside, hunched over a stack of papers at a table. I ducked behind the counter, my heart racing. I could hear snippets of her conversation on the phone. Yes, the transfers need to be completed by tomorrow. We can't afford any mistakes, she said, her voice tight with urgency. I held my breath, trying to focus on what she was saying. This was my chance to gather something concrete. Just then, her phone rang again, and she answered, her tone changing to a saccharine sweetness. Hello, darling. Yes, the wedding went splendidly. Emma is adjusting well, she said, her eyes flicking to the door as if she were checking for someone. I felt a surge of anger at her manipulative words. She had pulled me into this world of control, yet she spun lies about me being happy. After Mrs. Harper hung up, I moved silently to the paper she had left on the table. I quickly took a photo of the documents with my phone. My heart raced as I glanced through them, seeing figures and accounts that didn't make sense, large sums moving to untraceable accounts. Suddenly, I heard footsteps approaching. Panic surged through me as I hurried to hide behind a large display of coffee mugs. My breath quickened, and I prayed she wouldn't notice me. Emma, is that you? Mrs. Harper's voice called out, 
filled with a mix of curiosity and annoyance. I know you're in here. I held my breath, praying she would leave. My heart pounded in my chest. Just as I thought I was safe, she walked over to the display and peered around. You're not going to get away with this, dear. You're in way over your head. Feeling cornered, I burst out from my hiding spot. I'm not afraid of you anymore, Mrs. Harper. You can't keep controlling my life. Her eyes narrowed, her confidence wavering for a moment. You don't know what you're dealing with. I do. I shot back, holding on my phone. I have proof of your illegal activities, and I'm going to expose you. The tension hung in the air like a thick fog. Mrs. Harper's face twisted in anger, and I could see the threat in her eyes. You think you can take me down? You'll regret this, Emma. Maybe, I replied, feeling the adrenaline surging through me. But I won't let you control me any longer. I'm filing for divorce and taking you to court. This ends now. With that, I turned and stormed out of the coffee shop my heart racing, but my resolve unshaken. I headed straight to Mr. Green's office the next morning. I laid out everything I had gathered, feeling a sense of power for the first time in months. Emma, this is solid evidence, he said, examining the documents. We can file a suit against her. If she's involved in money laundering, this could be a serious case. With his help, I prepared for the battle ahead. The news of Mrs. Harper's illegal activities spread like wildfire when we took the case to court. I stood firm, my heart pounding as I faced my mother-in-law, who looked infuriated and desperate. As the judge ruled in my favor, I felt a weight lift off my shoulders. Mrs. Harper was found guilty of multiple charges, including fraud and money laundering. She was arrested and the business she had manipulated began to crumble. As the dust settled, I stood in the jewelry store, my father by my side. We did it, Emma, he exclaimed, pride shining in his eyes. I couldn't have done it without you. Dad, I said, tears of relief streaming down my face. This is our legacy, and it's finally ours again. With renewed strength, I resumed my college studies and began to rebuild the jewelry store. The path ahead was bright, and for the first time, I felt truly free. No longer controlled by Mrs. Harper, I was ready to reclaim my identity and my dreams. This journey had taught me the importance of standing up for myself, and I knew that no one could take away my independence again. I was determined to honor my family's legacy while forging my own future, one that I could control.